Hello again, I'm Dave Apsley. I'm a forester and a natural resources specialist with Ohio State University Extension. Today I'm on the Wayne National Forest near a little town in Perry County called New Straitsville. I'm actually on a floodplain of Monday Creek and this floodplain area is very wet. It's dominated by swamp white oak, which is what we're going to introduce you to today, and pin oak. And there's lots of also many shrubby species that depend on swampy wetland areas. I think this area is probably a little more expansive than it was originally. There were probably swamp white oak and pin oak species along the floodplain in an old oxbows of Monday Creek. But years ago, an old railroad bed was built, and that blocked a lot of the water flow from upslope to the creek, so I think this area may be a little more expansive than it was originally. But in any case, this is swamp white oak. It's a species of oak that can be found throughout Ohio in wetland areas, probably much more common in the northern part of the state than it is here in the hill country. And its range is pretty much north of the Ohio River. There are scattered populations south of the Ohio River, but it's much more common north of the Ohio River, especially in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and some of the states further west than that. So how do we identify this species, swamp white oak? Its scientific name is Quercus bicolor, and bicolor refers to the different color between the surface and the underside of this leaf. In the summer, it's not as obvious. The leaf has a little bit of a glossy appearance, and then the underside is dull and lighter colored. But in the fall, when these leaves hit the ground, um, they're going to be much darker on the surface and almost white or almost a little bit fuzzy on the underside. It is in the white oak group, so at the tip of these lobes or these, this wavy margin, you will not find bristle tips. They're more rounded and leaves are highly variable. They can have some little shallow lobes similar to white oak, but oftentimes the edge of the leaf is just kind of wavy. The leaf is described in many of the keys as obovate, which means reverse egg shape. And all that means that the whitest portion of the leaf is above the midrib, where if it's egg shaped or ovate, the whitest portion, like an egg, is closer to the base where it attaches to the twig. So again, those leaves are fairly large. They can be up to about seven inches in length. The keys say four to seven, and that wavy margin gives it away. Like many of, or like all the other oaks, the buds at the tip of the twig are going to be in clusters. So it looks like a knuckle sandwich of rounded buds um, between egg shaped and almost globular or globe shaped rounded. You will occasionally see these little hairy structures popping out between the buds. Um, bur oak also will do that, but these little hairy structures are called stipules. Twigs are really not a lot to talk about. They're kind of a light chestnut brown color. And again, the leaves do alternate like all the other oaks. As we get further back on the twig into the larger branches, say between an inch and four, maybe six inches in diameter, the bark is kind of unique. It exfoliates or it peels off and it becomes almost paper thin and peely on those larger branches. So that's something else to look for. One of the other very unique characteristics of swamp white oak is the stalk of the acorn. So your new word for today that describes that stalk is called a peduncle. And the peduncle, again, is simply the stalk on an acorn that attaches it to the twig. What makes swamp white oak very unique is the length of that stalk or peduncle. With the normal white oak, Quercus alba, that stalk is only going to be up to maybe a half inch in length, probably more typically a quarter. And many acorns almost attach directly to the twig without much of a stalk at all. But swamp white, that stalk or peduncle is an inch to two inches in length, and it makes it very obvious when you start finding these on the ground. I'm finding many caps on the ground that look like they are from this year's acorns, but I'm not finding many acorns. So I'm assuming the squirrels, maybe blue jays and other animals are getting these as soon as they're, they're mature. But that cap is kind of bowl shaped. It covers about a third of that acorn, and that acorn can be fairly large up to about an inch in diameter. They're almost rounded. They're not very elongate, say like, like white oak or chestnut oak. They're gonna be more rounded. And again, that cap is gonna cover about a third of that acorn. Very prolific. They're great species to have along with pin oak in these wetland areas. Really good for wood ducks and things, especially if this uh, area gets flooded again when there's still acorns on the ground. 
it's a large to it's actually listed as a medium sized trees but in these swamps where they've had time to mature they can become fairly large trees like the one behind me this thing is probably a, around 36 inches in diameter um, very deep furrowed bark down here as you get out on the branches you're going to have exfoliating bark which is very thin and papery the other good characteristic for this is that it's a poor self pruner so unlike white oak which prunes very well this thing's a poor self pruner and it's not uncommon as you look up into the canopy of this tree on the lower part of the bowl you're going to see dead branches and those branches will hang on for a long time um, swamp white oak probably can tolerate a little more shade so it hangs on to those branches a little bit longer because oftentimes they still have leaves that are productive so again this is swamp white oak pretty common if you can find swampy or wetland areas it's also a neat species to consider for your landscape. Again, you need to give it plenty of space, but if you've got areas where the soils are a bit heavy and not well drained, swamp white oak might be a species you'll want to consider. So thank you so much for your time, and please take at least part of your day to enjoy it in the woods.